All right, so uh, we're going to continue on our ECU uh, football opponent previews. And earlier in the week, we talked to Rich Phillips, play-by-play voice of the SMU Mustangs. They are in that group. Almost like if you look at the betting odds, there's a big four at the top with Tulane, the defending champion, uh, SMU, Memphis, and newcomer UTSA. And we'll learn more about those roadrunners today as Jared Kalmus joins us on the Pirate Radio Live Line. Uh, he is at Alamo Audible covering the UTSA Roadrunners and uh, also a contributor over at Underdog Dynasty. Uh, Jared, I uh, appreciate your time. How you doing today, man? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for bringing me on, and uh, hopefully the first appearance of, of many years of uh, football between ECU and UTSA. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, and most of all, I've said this, just it's, it's something new, it's something different, ECU playing in a dome, and the Alamo Dome at that, and I was thinking about it, Marcus, you uh, you played in the Carrier Dome, right? That's right. And won in the Carrier Dome. And we won. <laughs> and uh, so, But you don't see, uh, other than trips to Tulane, maybe a bowl game here and there, uh, it's a unique, uh, unique, unique venue, Jared, for those of us that have not played in something like that. So, what's a game day like there at the Alamo Dome for football? Well, first off, you guys are gonna love it, absolutely love it. I mean, as far as play on the field, it gets really loud. I mean, you can be in the Alamo Dome for like a high school playoff game, and maybe there's five thousand people there, and you're just like shocked at how loud it gets. Just the acoustics of the roof of that dome just amplifies noise, you know, similar to the Carrier Dome. And uh, it really has like a like a like almost like a pro NFL feel. So it's different than your typical collegiate atmosphere. You know, it's a little bit less of the of the collegiate vibe, and you know, more music over the speakers, and you know, replay boards everywhere, and <laughs> a lot of beer, a lot of concessions, easy to get to, and uh, our tailgating scene is just top notch. I mean, I think you guys will really appreciate that uh, for any pirate fans that make the long trip out to San Antonio. Um, you know, we haven't been doing it long, but we do it well, that's for sure. That is good to hear, and vice versa. Uh, when you guys make a return trip here to Greenville, you'll enjoy the certainly the tailgate aspect of it. Uh, Jared, let's talk about a, a really solid 2022 that could have been even better. And I remember UTSA, we do talk a lot of gambling here on the show, and talking to uh, Jeff Nadu, big man on campus, we were talking UTSA a lot early last year. Had that uh, heartbreaker to open up against Houston, a narrow win over Army, and then I remember thinking, all right, I think UTSA can go in there and beat the Longhorns. That didn't happen. Week three, lost 41-20. to So you start one and two, uh, and boy, did you finish strong after that. But man, uh, those, those couple go a different way early in the season. Uh, you could have had a real special year last year. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, that Houston game, it really came down to a 12 men on the field penalty. You know, UTSA had the stop right there and pretty much had the game on lock. And then, you know, Houston gets the free first down on that special teams blunder. Uh, so that was a tough one. You know, Jeff Trailer always seemed to flush the losses pretty quickly. Well, he's been a UTSA, but you can tell that one bothered him and stuck with them for a while. So that was a big what if. And then, you know, the Texas game, you know, the score on the scoreboard at the end of the game makes it seem like it wasn't close, but... Uh, you know, I, I was in Daryl Carey Oil Stadium that night, and I can promise you the uh, Longhorn fans were not too happy to be within one score of little old UTSA at the end of the third quarter. So it was, uh, it was a fun atmosphere for sure. And, you know, the team definitely showed a lot of promise, uh, more than the record showed, and then went on to prove that promise uh, throughout conference play. They went on a long winning streak, dominated the conference, and uh, that other loss on the season didn't come until your bowl game in the Cure Bowl against Troy. Uh, but yeah, I guess if there is such thing as like earning a, a step up in conferences, UTSA did just that uh, by dominating Conference USA last year. So, uh, Jared, how about the move? Do you feel like that UTSA is going to come in and and not have to face those growing pains? You think uh, you guys are a factor from day one? I think right now, I think they're in a pretty good spot. You know, I think having um, a seventh-year quarterback definitely helps in the transition. You know, I think when you see these teams make moves up, uh, you know, kind of the conference ladder, the teams that have a really established quarterback that knows their system will tend to do better right out of the gate, and that's what UTSA has in Frank Harris. So they return a lot. They've got a great coach. Um, I think they've been recruiting at the right level to compete in this conference for a couple of years now. So, you know, I think they're in a pretty good spot, at least, you know, if we're, if we're talking football only, if we want to talk basketball, it's a totally different story. But um, I definitely expect the Roadrunners to be in contention for a, uh, uh, well, I guess there's no divisions, but, you know, in contention to play in the conference championship game this year. 
Jared, this is Marcus. Um, you, uh, Clip talking about uh, you guys finished off on a strong note last year. You finished up in the top 25, 25th uh, to be exact. Uh, what's, it, what's been the, men, the, the mentality for you all coming into this season, getting ready for the uh, 2023 season, coming off that 25th um, pole? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, even Finish. back to last year, I think the message that Jim Trailer was sending to his guys was, you know, we want to show that UTSA is a program that's built to last, in his words, that it's not just a flash in the pan. You know, good quarterback, had a couple of good seasons, and, you know, it's kind of a novelty, and they'll be forgotten, right? They, they really wanted to uh, establish themselves as a program, not just as a good team, right? So there's a lot of seniors on this team that, you know, obviously uh, will be using their super senior season, so they were certainly no obligation to return. They had their degree and all of that. Uh, then, of course, you know, NIL, portal, tampering, all that stuff. There's a lot of guys on this roster uh, that there were a lot of rumors, you know, around SEC programs and stuff trying to entice them to hop in the portal. And, you know, with one key, key exception in Zachary Franklin, everyone else came back, right? So I think they're guys that are really bought, bought into this program and want to prove that they're capable of, you know, competing at this higher level in the American Athletic Conference. Talking to Jared Kalmus covering uh, UTSA Roadrunners football. And um, I wonder about Tulane with that, Marcus, where they had a banner year last year. They got a good coach in Willie Fritz, but – is that a one-year wonder, or is that something they can do back-to-back years? And that's something UTSA is going through. We've seen teams have those special seasons, but, man, it's tough to to repeat it, especially like what Jared said, everybody's coming after your guys, right? Absolutely, <laughs> man, because, um, you know, from our standpoint in regards to uh, being at the top and then teams at the bottom, they're looking up at you, and you got that target on your back, man, and you're the, uh, you're the giant, so to speak. And, um but uh, to look at it from a different level, different perspective is those guys still have a target as well. They, they still have a target to get to that number one spot or, or move up from 25 to, to 24 or whatever it may be uh, for them. So um, it, it's pretty interesting for sure. But uh, definitely, you know, you got, get, got all the teams that are going to be gunning for you in the conference for sure. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. You come in almost as a Martin man, Jared, because as I mentioned, you look at the gambling odds. UTSA is right up there with SMU, Memphis, and the defending champion, Tulane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of a strange uh, position to be in. You know, moving up from a, a lower level of competition at Conference USA, you know, and, you know, I'm going to guess if I'm a guy on the Memphis roster, SMU roster, Tulane roster, kind of looking down on UTSA, like how presumptuous of them to come in here and think that they're going to compete your fun, right? So I think that there's going to be that mental aspect uh, that the Roadrunners have to keep in check as well because the depth, not just on individual rosters, but from week to week is going to be a big difference from Conference USA. Looking at the uh, the scores outside of that Troy game, which um, looks like a score from the 1960s, it uh, looks like a lot of 30s, 40s, 50s on the left side uh, in the win column for you guys. And I see a few sevens on the defensive side. How about defense? We're kind of wondering, all right, who's going to play defense? Looks like the Americans are going to have a lot of shootouts this year. How about UTSA defensively? How do they hold up on that side? I think they're a solid defensive team, definitely not as exceptional as they're on offense. Um, some pretty good individual talents. I think the problem that UTSA's had on defense, and this goes back for a couple years, is they tend to play pretty aggressive, especially in the secondary. Um, so teams in America are going to see a lot of single coverage, uh, you know, a lot of one safety, zero safety looks, right? Uh, so the big play ability is definitely there. You know, if you catch a defender slipping or they're out of alignment or something like that. Uh, but they play an on-man front. You know, they've got some... Pretty good talent on the defensive line. Uh, there was a freshman that broke out last year and had a freshman All-American season, Trey Moore. Definitely a name to look out for there. He's a ferocious pass rusher that, um, you know, he's, like, very, like, obviously flexible with the line of scrimmage. Like, he tends to, like, dip down under blockers. So he's a, a lot of fun to watch. And um, just, you know, a lot of experience returning. Rashad Wisdom's one of the leaders of the defense, uh, San Antonio local, uh, that he missed half of last season with a shoulder injury. So we'll see how he bounces back from that. And uh, definitely good to get his experience and his physicality back there in the backfield. Talking to Jared Kalmus, uh, looking at their schedule, Marcus, and we'll get the UTSA schedule in, in particular. But you played in the ECU era of anyone, any place, any time. We've talked about you going down to Miami and beating the Hurricanes, going up to Q's and, and beating them. And it uh, looks like uh, UTSA has taken that mindset at Houston, at Tennessee, and Army is always tough. I got them in the non-conference this year. 
Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right, Clip. And uh, you look at the Tennessee game, who's done very well over the last couple of years. Um, they, they look at their schedule, and they're like, uh, this, this, is, this is a great opportunity for us to make a, a name for ourselves as a university uh, football team, at least, <laughs> as uh, Jared said. I uh, can't really speak for the other sports. Right. But um, but uh, it, it's a great opportunity for them looking at their schedule because if they win or, or come close to those games, uh, they're going to get noticed around the nation. And, uh, Jared, you, you get that rematch with Houston to start off, Texas State and Army in the Alamo Dome, and then a trip to Rocky Top. So, uh, nothing else. Fans got to be pumped about this non-conference schedule. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm really thrilled. And I live in Houston, right, so it's an extra bonus for me. But uh, I know the attendance is going to be awesome for Texas State and Army games. Uh, San Antonio is a big military city. So anytime a service academy is in town, uh, it's going to be a great turnout. And that one's be on a Friday on ESPN. So a great spotlight for the program and for the conference. And uh, kind of funny that you go to Tennessee. Like, man, it's a long ways to go to play a football game. Then the conference opener the next week is even further away in Philadelphia. Yeah, it looks the vibe <laughs> waiting for the guys to get readjusted a little bit. But, yeah, you know, really, if you look at a lot of UTSA schedules in the past, I mean, they've had years they never left the state of texas or they yeah. left the state of texas. that's what i was looking at i think it's like eight of 12 this year coming up yep. that you guys play in the state of texas yeah so there were a couple of years in conference usa where utsa would be pretty solid and then they would get out to the east coast and play marshall Charlotte, mm. you know schools like that old dominion and really struggle uh with that road trip so you know we'll see uh you know like that game in temple against Phil- in philadelphia it's quite quite a trip right so you know, feel to uh, the team get used, gets used to those longer road trips. We touched on it a little bit, Jerry, but would you say to where we are at this point, the transfer portal has been a net positive, net negative, kind of even? Like if people are going after UTSA's guys, some guys are stepping up from other schools to go to UTSA. Uh, here in uh, at East Carolina, we see guys that go to North Carolina, NC State. And, and maybe not get the time they want and come back home, so to speak. Come to, to ECU. That could happen when you're in a big state like Texas as well. So how's that worked out for the Roadrunners? Oh, man, it's been a life sin, you know, for UTSA. I think it's one of the more underrated story points of the Jeff Trailer era at UTSA. You know, before Zakari Franklin left to Ole Miss uh, this offseason, UTSA never lost a serious contributor to the portal, not a single one. And it's just hard to wrap your head around how, uh, you know, Jeff Trailer is able to pull it off. You know, UTSA has a respectable NIL program, um, but it's definitely not a power five level, right? So these guys are really playing, you know, for love of their teammates, love of their coach and all of that. And they've been able to get a lot of guys that are, are from Texas and maybe were recruited by the staff at another, um, another program or were recruited by UTSA, you know, years ago. And, you know, just like you're describing, you know, the third string, second string, whatever, um, and they come to UTSA and become, you know, instant impact, all-conference type player. Um, I mean, Nick Troy Fortune is a really great example. So he was at West Virginia. He was a starter there, had some injuries, lost the starting spot. And then he came to UTSA, started from day one, won a conference championship, right? So a lot of guys you can point to like that, that UTSA has really, uh, really enjoyed, you know, getting a second chance to recruit some, you know, three, four-star level talent for sure. East Carolina will play UTSA coming up October 28th. Do you know if Victor Wimbanyama will be there to flip the coin or anything? Is uh, uh, a lot of a lot of folks excited around those parts right now, right? Yeah, no kidding. It's awesome. Uh, you know, a lot of Spurs actually have been showing up to the games in the past couple of years, so hopefully he'll come out. Um, I'm excited to see him do the coin flip because, I mean, he's so tall. It's going to be some serious gravity when that uh, coin comes down. But, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's out there for at least one game. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. See those old uh, – and that's kind of my fascination with the Alamo Dome. I just remember watching so many games there on TV as a kid. and They had that big blue whatever up, uh, Jared, like the curtain to – cover part of the arena but just so many uh championships great players um sean elliott hitting a corner three and uh, i don't know just a lot of i think it'll be cool to uh to be playing some football there yeah definitely and you know it's cool for uh i, I guess maybe the older fans in our fan base because the students are too young to remember those first playing in the alma dome but you know it's cool some of the moments that utsa has had these past couple of years are now kind of written into the lore of the alma dome you know like a lot of like oscar cardenas's catch utsa's tight end that's just been incredibly clutch these past couple of years you know it's like those moments for the utsa fans and the san antonio natives just kind of stand you know on that uh, same kind of pillar, right? So it's just cool to see that local tie-in, you know, and really uh, cementing UTSA as San Antonio's team and not just the universities. 
Jared Calmus joining us. Marcus, anything else you want to know about these road runners before Man. we let Jared go? Uh, Jared, you guys have uh, experienced some tremendous amount of heat down there. How, how do those guys beat the heat as they get uh, uh, starting to prepare for the season uh, when they come back? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I can tell you they, they probably won't have as many cramps as uh, some of the other teams, right, when they're playing outdoors. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Like, like, I think back to the Army game last year when they're up in West Point. I think, you know, it was maybe 80, 90 degrees up there in New York, and the Army players were, were dropping like flies, you know, even with all the training and drills and marching they do. But UTSA was so used to the crazy heat in San Antonio that – uh, they weren't as phased by it. So you definitely got to take a little bit off in practice sometimes. And, you know, hear Coach Trailer say that, too. They have the GPS monitoring vest or whatever um, so they can see, you know, the, the miles per hour they're going to practice and the heart rates and all that stuff. So they'll definitely take a little bit off here and there, you know, to protect the guy's health and all of that. But, um, you know, they use a lot of science and have a pretty great strength and conditioning coach. So I think they're, uh, they're pretty adjusted to it at this point. And Marcus, we had a uh, pretty mild spring, early summer here in eastern North Carolina, but starting to feel kind of normal June, July temps yes. now, right? Today and yesterday. Yes, sir. Lots of humidity. Yeah. And, uh, it's and a, heat. Is that is it a different heat? Like the Texas no, I, I heat and the North the Carolina? I think it's, it's similar? Okay. Yeah, I think it's very similar. Um, they've had some record-breaking record heat uh there i believe in the last week or so but um but yeah we haven't experienced that this year yet i always hear like out like i guess arizona or like the dry heat yeah, compared arizona to our dry. humid heat that's type right thing. yeah all right uh jared good stuff man uh we'll wrap it up with you here what are your expectations for this utsa team as we said challenging non-conference and then your first year uh, in the AAC, although you'll see UAB, FAU, North Texas, and Rice on the schedule. So you'll get a nice feel of that league mixed with the new AAC. So I don't know. What kind of number are you looking at for this year? Yeah, I think right now, you know, I, th- I think I put the over at eight and a half. You know, I think nine wins feels about right for me. Uh, there's some kind of unknowns on the schedule. You know, like Army's moving away from the triple option, right? So, like, those games have been really close between the two programs. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and, you know, some more road trips than UTSA seen in the past. So, you know, I'm not uh, expecting the same. You know, it's hard to expect 11 win seasons year in or year out, no matter who you are. You know, unless you're Alabama or Georgia, it's probably not going to happen, right? So, you know, 9 win feels good to me. Um, team's got to stay healthy and all that. But I, I just think week in and week out, there's going to be some tougher battles. You know, UTSA had like some auto wins in Conference USA uh, from some programs that just didn't have the same level of talent. So. I think that feels all right, and that, that would be a huge success for UTSA, for sure. Jared, uh, great chatting with you, man. We will uh, talk to you again uh, the week of the game. We'll catch up with you and do another preview. But uh, looking forward to seeing the road run- runners. And, and when people have asked, you know, who do you like coming into this league, not from a geographical standpoint. I, I don't like having a team in San Antonio and East Coast Conference. But from a competitive standpoint, the venue you guys have a cool logo cool colors like all that stuff i'm on board with utsa i think it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, having you guys in the league yeah i think we're a fun team you know you meet a lot of people that just randomly follow utsa just because of the, the meet me and the roadrunner and stuff but you know the meet meet marcus yeah. remember the old roadrunner oh man meet me <laughs> uh so yeah that's good stuff jared uh thanks for joining us today man enjoyed it and we'll talk again down the road with you thank you guys same here all right there is jared calmus talking utsa football